now we begin video number two. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. There is a link to that first transit ride I just recorded in the description of this video. And today is Saturday, March 30th. It is 3.45 p.m. and about six degrees Celsius here in downtown Toronto. There's a look south down Spadina Avenue and a rather iconic view of the CN Tower off in the distance. And for this one, I'm gonna make my way through the Kensington Market neighborhood. And then I'll walk over to Spadina Avenue and south down to Queen. And then over to the Eaton Center where I'm supposed to meet someone at 5 p.m. I'm a little early for that. Here is College Street. And I'm currently heading west and when we get to Augusta, I'll head south through Kensington Market. some interesting art down this laneway. I won't lie, it's also a rather interesting smell. And getting here wasn't so bad. The shuttle buses were pretty quick. And fortunately, at least for once, they weren't overcrowded as the subway on line two is closed this weekend between St. George and Woodbine Station. There is TNT Supermarket. That is owned by Galen Weston. And it's a sister chain of Loblaws. And there's a big boycott of Loblaws and their related companies slated for the month of May. If you want more information on that, you can check out the subreddit Loblaws is Awful. I don't shop at any of their stores anyways, but TNT is an Asian supermarket. They were always kind of considered the Loblaws of grocery stores, so when Loblaws took them over, there wasn't much of a change. Their already high prices, at least relative to other Asian grocery stores, just became higher. The Kensington Market neighborhood. Oh, someone's getting honked at. We're making a right turn from the left lane. The Kensington Market neighborhood is bordered by College Street here to the north, to the west by Bathurst Street, to the south by Dundas, and to the east by Spadina. It's one of the most popular neighborhoods in the city for locals and tourists to come visit on weekends. And this is the north end of Augusta Avenue. It's known for a number of indie and vintage clothing shops. There's various art spaces, grocers, bakers, cheese shops. And of course, a good selection of bars and restaurants. I've done a number of videos through here. There's the Same Sun Hostel. That's me. Hi, good. Nice to meet you. Cheers. It's only 
always good to see a friendly face. Say hi. There's a lot of cafes and bars through here. And on the last Sunday, between May and October, they close these streets and make them pedestrian only. Really, that's something that should be more permanent. And the city had their chance to implement those changes last year, but they failed. That's one thing Toronto lacks compared to a lot of the great cities of the world, just large pedestrianized neighborhoods. That's something Montreal has in spades, particularly in the summertime. Some more laneway art. There's a number of hidden laneways and tucked away streets in Kensington. Burgenator, quarter pounder, cheeseburger, home fries, garlic, aioli, and a soda for $12.49. That's quite a good deal. I've never actually eaten there. Always a colorful and vibrant scene here. And they've done a good job of maintaining the bohemian culture of the neighborhood. It's fought off several attempts to gentrify it. Nike once opened up a store here. That was less than popular. Walmart tried to open up a urban format style store just on the very west end where Cromer Radio used to be. Did, uh, any yeah, the city like put in square footage requirements uh, or restrictions that would have prevented that store. All right, so we have a bit of a dilemma. Do I keep going south on Augusta here? Or we could walk along Baldwin over to Kensington Avenue. Dinky Dinky Tattoo and Piercing. It's a <laughs> clever name. Oh, 
I'll try to come back on that first Sunday. Where it is close to cars. I didn't have any. That'll be in pretty much two months from now. This is Baldwin Street, and you could keep going east here and cross Spadina and carry on Baldwin on the other side. And you'll find yourself in Baldwin Village. Someone should let this person know that their turn signal is not working. They drove all the way from South Carolina like that. Brim's a hat store. It's the Kensington Fruit Market on the left. And it wouldn't be a Johnny Strides in Kensington Market video if I didn't shout out Moonbeam Coffee. That place is phenomenal and if you're buying beans to grind, that's one of the best spots in the city in my humble opinion. There's one of those streets that's kind of tucked away, Kensington Place. Well, these old Victorian homes have vintage clothing shops in them. I think this is new since the last time I was here. There's the Cocktail Emporium. The King of Kens Kensington Victory Girl Vintage. I wonder if they have a tribute to Al Waxford there, the actual King of Kensington. There's a statue of him over in the park just west of here. Trinity Bellevue Park. It's Benton Village. Ray and we are leaving Kensington and re-entering Chinatown although the lines get kind of blurred between one and the other and on the south side of Dundas Street here is Alexandra Park
and this is east on the north side of Dundas Street West. Hong's Luck Kung Fu Club. Bonnie. Action Kid is in Hanoi right now. I bet he's been enjoying a lot of Bondi. There's Juicy Dumpling across the street. $3.99 for six pieces, but those are not dumplings they're advertising. Those are actually meatballs. Sort of ground zero for the main Chinatown downtown, Dundas and Spadina. And you can head east on Dundas here and head over to the Eaton Center. Well, it's Dundas Square. But we're going to head down to Queen and head over that way. There, I believe, is the only downtown Dairy Queen in Orange Julius location. That's the Dragon City Mall. I've been through there in a few videos. Just missed this guy. And this is south down the west side of Spadina. There's a hot pot restaurant. Uh, the second floor is a place a lot of people just call the train. It used to be located on the first floor back in the mid 2000s. It's a popular Vietnamese soup restaurant. There goes a 510 Spadina streetcar. And that replaced, I think, the 77 Spadina bus back in 1997 when they implemented this dedicated streetcar right away. 
I think before it was the 510 Spadina, it was the 506 Harbor Front. That streetcar will go south down to the Harbor Front. And ironically, before it was the 77 bus, there were streetcars on this stretch of Spadina. There's the Chinatown Center and the former Super 8 Hotel behind it. That is exceptionally annoying. So I'll be making a left at Queen Street coming up. <laughs> Cereal infused ice cream. Make a left and we'll head over to the Eaton Center. Got a message that my friend is running late and I am running early. <laughs> as well <laughs> follow the ambulance through. Eventually, be 
an Ontario Line subway station as they're building a new subway line that'll run along this stretch of Queen. They've also expropriated and torn down the building on the southwest corner. Legendary Horseshoe Tavern. And we're now walking east on the north side of Queen Street West. I read that one of the oldest bars in the city, one that claims to be the oldest bar, although I don't think that's true. Just up ahead is closing down the Black Bull. It's a Casper mattress store. It's quite a different vibe to a very commercialized retail strip versus where we were in Kensington Market. Club Monaco. And look at this. This store, Brandy Melville, always seems to be lined up, but I've never quite seen it like this. They're known for being a one size fits all. Well, in store, and I think it's kind of on the petite side that they carry. There's definitely some guys doing boyfriend duty. That is nutsy cuckoo. You wouldn't catch me in a lineup like that, even for a store I wanted to go to. There's Mountain Equipment Co-op on the left. It's the north end of Peter Street becomes Blue Jays Way, just south of there. And there is the Black Bull. This might be their last weekend of operation. Well, it says since 1833, but that's not entirely correct. It hasn't always been a bar at this location, nor has it the Black Bowl continuously existed. Not sure of the exact history, but I think the Wheat Chief correctly lays a claim to be in Toronto's oldest pub, 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 <laughs> tavern. It's one of the advantages of, or I guess disadvantage of doing these long form videos that you don't edit. I screw up, I can't go back and redo it. Look up that. It's one of my more favorite of the newer downtown condos.
Somebody's going somewhere in a hurry. the old Chum building. <laughs> Formerly home to City TV and much music. And Speaker's yeah. Corner. Have a sign saying Moses Nimer Way. It's uh, Queen Street West right there at Queen and John. It was the media mogul behind City TV, which is now a Rogers property you know, located over at Dundas Square. And this building went up. early 1900s. I think it opened in 1913 and served as the headquarters of the Methodist Church of Canada. Before later becoming a major studio. A Hummer EV. It certainly looks better than that cyber truck. And this is McCall Street, and streetcars aren't running east of here. Due to Ontario Line construction, so that Queen Streetcar will be heading west to the Dufferin Gate. As I start to lose my voice. I think we found where that police car was going. There's a couple of cruisers and an ambulance. Hopefully it's nothing serious.
the Campbell House Museum. I've never been. I think it's a period correct house dating back to the 1800s. And this is at University Avenue. I'm gonna go get hung up in the median here. the Financial District, looming behind the Four Seasons Center for the Performing Arts. And at the center section is the Osgood Station, and Osgood Station is being expanded to allow for a connection to the Ontario Line. And a number of big old trees were removed on the northeast corner there at Osgood Hall to make way for the construction efforts. And we're about to head by Nathan Phillips Square and New City Hall. There's a look up at the Brutalist Sheridan Hotel. Should we go check out the Toronto sign? I guess so. I got a fair bit of time to kill. City Hall and the Toronto sign and they have restored the pond here. This was frozen for the winter. And this was a large public skating rink. A rink. <laughs> rink.
Falun Gong practitioners. The forbidden yoga. Looks like there's a Toronto Maple Leaf logo. Southbound bus. And this is the intersection of Queen and Bay. That is Old City Hall. Tunneled over to the south side of Queen Street here. at our destination, the Eaton Center, but I'm going to walk through it, and I walked through it maybe a month ago in a video. I think I just stuck to the main level the whole way through, so maybe I'll head up to the upper floor. Saks Fifth Avenue and the Bay are just on the right. Store is a bit too fancy for my blood. Yeah, it's into North America's busiest shopping center. It's got multiple, multiple <laughs> levels. I'm talking like I have marbles in my mouth. Here. The iconic flying Canadian geese.
north. There's the Apple store. Arcteryx. It's generally kind of higher end stores up on this floor. There's the Ovo store. Shopping mall would be complete without the Sephora. We even saw a few of those in Bangkok. At least I think I did. Knuckles, which I think is one of the dumbest name companies of all time. But apparently their coats are decently good from what I've heard. And straight ahead used to be Nordstrom. And before that it was Sears and before that it was Eaton's. This Canadian chroma exhibit set up here. I've stopped and checked it out a few times on video, so I think we'll just keep waltzing right on through. That and my camera battery is getting kind of low. We've been recording for over an hour and a half now, non-stop. BMO is, or is going in, it used to be a Samsung Experience store. That is a massive downgrade as far as the mall experience is concerned. A bank, a prime retail location, and a major shopping mall. Insert puke emoji. Uniqlo, H&M. There used to be a big Club Monaco on this end. Way back in the 90s. Oh, 
and look at this, it looks like there's an M&M's event. Really? At Dundas Square. The intersection of Young and Dundas is just north of here. Don't have time to snap a pick, enjoy a free pack of M&M's. Well, we started in Chinatown and went through Kensington Market. And then went back into Chinatown and headed south down to Queen. And then followed Queen over to the Eaton Center. Walked through the Eaton Center and finished up at Dundas Square. Thank you for watching. Video two of two filmed all at once. I think it's my first time ever doing that. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides and there is a super thanks button appearing below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink.